What up, everyone? How's it going? Uh, my name is Neki Jamal. Welcome to the live show. And I have, honestly, this is a huge honor for me. I have 401 Dentistry, him, 416 Dentistry himself, Dr. Jason Adanata, my homie. How are you, buddy? Yeah. Ah, oh, man, how's it going? Well, I am honored to be on this here, man. Nikki Jamal live, man. This yeah. is gonna, this is lit, man. Wow. Yeah, this feels really like straight up from like live from New York or something like that. Oh, yeah. You yeah. have, your, Saturday name, you have your name in light. Oh, it's Saturday Night Live right here, right? Wednesday. I don't need my name in lights. You got your name in lights right behind you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, this guy. Yeah. But this Jay, is awesome. Thanks for having me. Dude, it's, uh, it's honestly, it's, it's an honor for me because. I've seen your growth through the years. I've known you. I want. What would you say? I've known you for five years now. Four, four or five years. Something like that, man. Something yeah. like that. I met you at a at a bites course, and I fell in love with Jason Adadada, my man crush, <laughs> my buddy. And honestly, I have Jason Adanada to thank because he's always pushed me to get into you know videos to to learn about videos to take photos like third molars online would not exist without jason's oh help and guidance and support and uh you know I, I i i have to give you kudos man like you, you taught me everything and like youtube wasn't teaching me anything and i'd be calling jason at three in the morning being like yo what does aperture mean <laughs> and uh dude jay I, I appreciate it man but um i want i want the world to hear your story because i've seen the the fruits of your labor like you you've been working so hard and you're killing it man but uh you know for those of you that don't know jason adanada is 416 dentistry and uh I, I, we're going to get all into that, but first, before, I, I want you to give, you know, some background on you. Who are you, man? Where'd you come from and, and uh, what, what got you here? Yeah, so uh, my story goes, I was born and raised in Toronto, specifically Scarborough. Uh, you know, Scarborough doesn't really have the gray. Yeah, there you go. Scarborough, right? Represents, my grandma uh, lives in Scarborough. I know, I know. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Scarborough doesn't have like the greatest like reputation in Toronto. You know, it's uh, uh, the burbs. Uh, it's called Scarlem, right? And uh, you know, growing <laughs> up, <laughs> growing up, I you know we didn't have that much. You know, I had loving parents, and they did everything for my brother and I to have an education and whatnot. My mom stayed home with me. And my brother uh, helped raise us and my dad had to work multiple jobs in order to let that happen. So a lot of the times we relied on the community, uh, the community swimming pool, the community center to do arts and crafts that kept us busy going to the library, you know, every weekend and, and reading and whatnot. And so we're going to touch upon the you know, community and how much that means to me later on. Right. But um, <clears throat> by growing up, like I had this sort of our like inclination to, to art. And uh, with my parents, uh, you know, when I told them that my teacher wanted me to go to an art school, they pretty much shot that down immediately. They're like, no, you're going to do something with your life, right? You're going to be a you're gonna be a doctor, you're going to be a lawyer. Do something be a doctor, a lawyer, an optometrist. Yeah, 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 no yeah art school. You no, 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 no art, man. right? No, uh, an so, accountant, you know, maybe, I... maybe an accountant. Man, <laughs> dude, we got immigrant parents. That, this is how it goes, hey, man. You, you exactly, become right? a professional, so, right? Yeah. So that got shot down pretty quick. Uh, and then, you know, I went to I went to U of T uh, and then in my third year of undergrad, I was like, wow, I'm almost finished undergrad. Like, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And that's when I started shadowing, you know, different professions, looking into pharmacy, looking into being becoming a medical doctor, optometry. And then one uh, one week, uh, a friend of mine was writing that he was he was planning to write the DAT. And then he had he was having lunch with his his friend that was in dental school. And he's, he asked me if I wanted to join. I was like, yeah, you know what? I never really considered dentistry, but, you know, why not? And after I started learning about it and I decided to shadow my dentist growing up, I was like, this is pretty awesome. Like, it is actually a mixture of art and, and, and science. And yeah. so I'm like, I think I'll like it. So I wrote the DATs and then I've been really blessed and fortunate to have got into dental school at in Toronto. And so... Um, when I went to dental school in Toronto, I found that a lot of people had a connection to dentistry already, whether it be like a mom or a dad or an uncle or whatever. Right. And then I'm just this kid from Scarborough entering dental school. I'm like, turn to the left, turn to the right. I know nothing about dentistry at all. Yeah. Right. And I felt so out of place. And so in third year of dental school, I don't know why third year seems to be like the year epiphanies happen. It's like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm almost done dental school and I don't know anything. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> So true. man. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm like, uh, if it's, I only have a year left, I gotta, if I want to excel at this, I have to, I have to do more. Like I, I, I really, I want to be the best version of myself. I want to be the best for my patients and I, I need more education. I need more mentorship. And so I decided to do a residency after, uh, after dental school at U of T. I okay. spent one year in the U S uh, in Rochester, New York, doing a, an advanced education in general dentistry. And honestly, that opened my world to dentistry. Um, I found like I went there to answer or answer questions or have my questions answered. But I found that I left there with even more questions, right? Yeah. And you know how Ho Young and and uh, our brother there, right? And uh, and um, Dr. Kwan always talks about this Dunning Kruger effect. Like I fully believe it. You never know what you don't know, and you have yeah. to search for the truth. And uh, me going to explore. Uh, you know, another country and learning from other people really opened my eyes to this new world of dentistry. And then I started going down this rabbit hole and I started doing all the CE, you know, going down to Spear Education in, in Scottsdale, going to Coise in, in Seattle, and then kind of travel in the world. And honestly, Nikki, like, like I said, in first year, uni first year of dental school, I knew zero, nothing about dentistry. I have no connection yeah. to dentistry. So everything I know today was because of someone willing to spend some some time with me, whether it be a second, a minute, hours, days to teach me. And that's why I'm so thankful to have somebody like yourself that is an incredible clinician willing to spend the time with me, to teach me, to mentor me. So I can't thank you enough, man. No, oh, bro, it's, uh, dude, we, we, we help each other. Um, I, I wanna ask you a quick question. Do you recommend everyone take that one year that like extra one that's year a, after school to do that GPR? That's a great question because honestly, I wouldn't be the person and the dentist that I am today without that year. Mm -hmm. However, however, anything that you do is what you make out of it, right? Like uh, the, you get what you, you put in. Totally. And so if you do the year and you put your, your, your heart and soul into it, your, your sweat equity in it, you're going to yeah. get a lot out of it. Right. Well, some people just cruise through that year because they feel like it's an obligation to do it. Right. right. And so I'm sure you even know, like you have a great program with third molders online there, uh, hearing really great things about it. And, and you have that one on one mentorship. And I'm sure you have keen students that really take advantage of that and then and utilize that platform in order to excel. And uh, it's just what you kind of what you get out of it is it's, it's what, what you put, you put in, into right? it. No, I, I totally yeah. hear that. Now, the, the cool part about you, Jay, is that um, when I first went to a course with you, I saw this dude. I didn't know you at the time. I saw this <laughs> dude with his DSLR on a gimbal, but I didn't know what a gimbal was back then, on this like little tripod. And he's like, you know, scoping around me, trying to take a video. And I'm like, you know, hiding my model because it's like, I'm a butcher. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. And, and I'm like, dude, why do you want to film me? And you go yeah. around and then I see this, I follow you like on social media and I was like, bro, this guy created the most like, like a director's cut award winning video of his CE course. How did you get into yeah. that? Like you make these insane yeah. videos of, of the stuff that you do, especially really cool CE. Um, how did you get into that? And what made you start doing that? Yeah. You know what? Um, I started getting into it because I was investing a lot of time into dentistry. Like dentistry for me is not a nine to five. It was, it's my life, right? I Dude, live it. That is the it, clip right, right there. Dentistry <laughs> is not a nine to five. Dentistry is life. And so yeah. many dentists or so many non-dentists don't understand that. Dentistry is it, life. It, it, the clinic ends at five, is, but man. it really starts at five. It, it, no, honestly. And like, I found myself like, you know, uh, on a Friday after I finished work, I'm like rushing to that CE course that's starting, you know, yeah. Friday evening, spending my whole weekend dedicating myself to trying to, you know, excel at this craft. And I was like, you know what they say in dental school, right? If it's not written, it didn't happen. Yeah. And it's like the Monday morning when I went to work and I spent the whole weekend, like really trying to master my craft, nobody knew about it. And I right. wanted to tell my story and I wanted to show the world that I love what I do and I'm passionate about what I do. And this is what I spent the week in doing, sacrificing my time where I could be doing maybe something else, but because I love this, this is my hobby really. And uh, I wanted people to honestly see dentistry in a different light. You know, me meeting you, me meeting this entire community of passionate uh, clinicians and healthcare providers. Uh, 
I wanted people to look at different dentistry different, like the general public. Like we have the stigma as dentists, right? People don't like necessarily going to the dentist, right? We're right. evil. We like to put pain, but <laughs> we see the amazing things we do in our patient's life and we can change people's life for the better. And we do it every single day. And why isn't those stories being told? So I wanted to tell those stories so that people will look at dentistry differently and will actually enjoy coming to the dentist and want to come to the dentist. Dude, you are, honestly, uh, you are an amazing storyteller. What do you, what do you tell the dentist that doesn't know how to take videos that like, you know, has a smartphone, um, you know, they're on Instagram just to lurk or they're, you know, post some photos here and there. What do you tell that person to get into storytelling? Like how, where, where do people start? Oh man, that's a great question. I think it starts with yourself, right? I think it's a matter of figuring out who you are and, and being authentic, like being open and honest on social media, which can be very vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you're afraid what people will think about you, but if you put that out there and you put that positive energy out there, honestly, majority of times that positive energy just comes right back. And the way you're feeling, I'm sure someone else is feeling the same way, yeah. you know, and then you become part of this community of people of like-minded people. And I think that's what really truly helped me become, you know, the clinician I am today and will help me go forward to become, you know, the clinician I am going to be in the future. Yeah, no, I, but I, I totally think, you know, that. Thing Authenticity. Makes, I think that's, the other thing, Nikki, though, is like a lot of people are so caught up with, you know, creating the production and maybe it's a problem where, you know, I did invest a lot of time trying to perfect and make this video, the videos look good. Like, man, you look, you look fresh right now on the screen, man. Like this looks like a proper <laughs> studio setup here, right? But people might be intimidated, right? People might be like, wow, Nikki's videos look amazing. I don't even think I can do it. So I'm not going to start. Right. But I tell you right now. A lot of people can appreciate progress more than perfection. You know, oh, if you go big time, you just nailed it. Right? Progress over perfection. Okay. Absolutely. Don't, don't, don't let that, you know, wanting to be perfect paralyze you and not take that first step, take the steps and people will see that you're being open and honest. People are seeing that you want to be authentic and you want to just tell your story and they'll gravitate towards that, man. So just get started, do something. And the phones, your phones are so good these days, right? Yeah. Like a lot of times I'm filming stuff with my phone and that's fine too, right? Yeah. Jay, I, I love it, man. Uh, progress over perfection. That is, I, I think that sums a lot of people's experience because we always want to get to the end goal, but we, once you get there, you realize that the, the true power of the entire experience was the journey and yeah. seeing that progress over perfection or seeing that progress over the end result really means a lot and i like that advice just get started no one's expecting an, an uh you know an oscar award winning documentary like i know you could produce but you know just start somewhere so I, that, that's awesome jay um but i want to talk about 416 dentistry okay you started this brand and you know for all those dentists that want to start a brand how is it that a dude in Western Canada is rocking the 416 <laughs> dentistry brand and it's a dental office. Like, man, my name of my office is Wayside Dental Center. I don't think I could pay someone to wear a Wayside <laughs> Dental Center hoodie. And here I am rock and I'm proud. I, I like walk through airports with this and I'm like, yeah, look at me, man. I'm rock. I'm rocking my boy Jay here. How, how did you get to that point? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it I ever like started with the intention of creating this brand. You know, four one six dentistry was really combining two things that I love. You know, dentistry obviously, and uh, the love for the city of Toronto. And the interesting thing though is like people, Toronto's interesting in the fact that this pride for Toronto didn't start until I think maybe about like eight to ten years ago, man. Like. Hmm. People started feeling proud to be from Toronto uh, and didn't seem, didn't look as themselves as like the underdog when, you know, Drake made it big, The Weeknd made it big, you know, the Raptors won the championship. Then everybody started to feel like, you know, I'm actually proud to be from Toronto and there's a yeah. sense of belonging. So for me, you know, the 416 doesn't necessarily represent just an area code of where we are, but it represents that feeling and that culture that we have in Toronto where, you know, we hustle, we grind. 
and uh, to get, you know, to achieve what we want to achieve. And this is that culture that I wanted to create in 416 Dentistry in a space where everybody's supportive of each other. You know, one man goes down, next man up. Let's 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 get, you know, let's let's make sure that every patient has that experience, no matter if, you know, someone, you know, fall, uh, you know, is sick and can't come to work or whatnot, you know, so everybody's trying to be the best versions of themselves and excel and everyone's really supportive of that and that's the vibe that i get here in toronto right now how do you and i totally agree man i feel like you know the hip-hop side of toronto brought community together and yeah. i don't know how that happened but you it, i think the whole country saw that evolve and you're totally right it's drake it's the raptors it's the weekend but then you know it's it's people feeling connected to their own community and I see that in 416 Dentistry. How do you get your people, like your staff, how do you get them to buy into that culture? Because I feel like you're doing that, man. Like, how, how do you do that? And that's, that's tough. Like, uh, right now, um, there, there's, there's, there's staffing shortages all over, right? Totally. All over. And uh, what's interesting is because we've created this culture and people are witnessing it and people are seeing it, uh, people want to be part of this. Like people feel like there's some sort of magic that's happening here. And uh, we have been having people kind of knock on our doors and wanting to be part of this team. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, the answer is. I don't know what the secret is really. But uh, the amazing thing is that everybody that's a part of this team and, you know, he sham talked about this before that I feel like we're, we're, we're a pack of lions. Like we're a pride of lions. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody wants to be the best. Uh, and when we're all together as a unit, as a group, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Right. You know, I'm honestly blessed to have, uh, have met and work alongside, you know, Mark Chen, who you're going to be, uh, yeah. you're going to be, uh, I'm excited for that. Yeah. 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 He's a big player in the digital, well, you know, space and, and denturism. Like he lectures all over Canada. He's, yeah. he's a wizard when it comes to digital dentistry. Yeah. And, um, and once I built this place here, like I met an incredible hygienist that I'm working with right now, uh, Karen Ng, like she's, she's a monster at what she does. She's an all-star and she single-handedly turned this office here into the first certified GBT dental practice in Canada. Like this, this girl's amazing. And so for me, it's like, I got the love and support of these people and, and I'm only just one person. And I know that in order to, you know, dentistry is a team sport. And in yeah. order to win this championship, everybody has to be on the same page. Everybody has to be, you know, the same goal. And just like how the Raptors won, right? There's, you know, there's no, yes, you know, we had Kawhi, but there are other key elements and key components that, 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 and key players that play that role. And no one needs to necessarily have the ball in their hand because everyone just wants to win that championship. Yeah, dude, I, I totally hear you. I feel like people want to always be part of something bigger than themselves. And you've been able to portray this and you've been able to you know garner a following based on that. And I think it's so crazy when I hear I'm in Western Canada, like there's staff shortages here, but not nearly what there is in Toronto. And I hear my friends in Toronto be like, man, I can't find a hygienist. I can't find an assistant. And yeah, I talk to my, my boy Jay here. And he's like, yeah, I got seven applications today. It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's almost just like how, like, it, it's, it's really cool that if you develop something, people will come. If you develop something that people can be a yes. part of, you know, they will come to you. And um, I, I think you've always looked at the long game that way. Um, how in the community per se, like how did you want four one dentistry to be accepted by patients? Because, you know, as dentists, I love the four one six brand, but I'm a dentist as well. How can I get a patient? You know, I got to take out their wisdom teeth. How do I get them to fall in love with four one six dentistry? How did you do that? Yeah. Um, I think it all starts off with being more than just dentistry. Right. I see you. I see you be going into the community, going into different coffee shops, bakeries, uh, the local shoe store, buying shoes, literally being a face and a recognized face and icon in, in the community where there's that sense of trust because they already seen you around. They've already had conversations with you. They've seen you on maybe social media and whatnot. 
And uh, for me, I think it's a matter of, of being bigger than dentistry, uh, creating a space where, like, this is what I want to do with 416 Dentistry. I want it to essentially be a hub in Scarborough where we make positive change because it's in our DNA to really want to make and elevate this whole Scarborough community. Uh, I kind of mentioned this to you before, like, you know, as dentists, we're so focused on helping people with their smiles, but I essentially want to be the reason why they smile. You know, I want, I want, I want 416 Dentistry and our little lounge or reception area here to be a place where uh, bright minds and uh, um, um, leaders in, in, in Scarborough can come together, brainstorm, figure out ways to make positive change. And I want it to be a beacon where like other kids from Scarborough could say, you know what, Jason's from Scarborough. He had the same upbringing. He went to the same high school as me. If he can do it, I can do it. And I can follow my dreams because look what he has done. This is what I want this 416 dentistry to really be. And for me, it's amazing because like we had our grand opening in October. Like we almost had 200 people show up to our grand opening, which was for a dental office. Yeah. And it was because like, members of the community, friends, uh, for example, I had two friends who were on MasterChef Canada that came and came out to support and they, they baked goods in order for people to bring home with them uh, after coming to the dental office, but they were there for photo op opportunities to talk to kids in the community. And my friend Chris uh, is planning to do like a, like a TED talk to high school students in the community because his his story is very fascinating and interesting too. Like he was uh, he was studying pharmacy at UFT and he decided to kind of pursue his passion for baking. And now he has bakeries all over uh, Toronto and he's killing it. He's doing amazing things. And I think when people hear these stories, uh, it really inspires them to follow their dreams just like how I did. And now we have 416 Dentistry here, man. Dude, I love you. Dude, you're an, an inspiration to an, an entire generation. Um, oh. I think that's that, that's so freaking cool, man, that like as a dentist, everyone always thinks of us as, you know, we, we want to inflict pain and you're trying to change the entire experience behind that. Um, how, how do you get the word out though? Like, how are you telling the world about 416 Dentistry and, and what could we do to, you know, share similar experiences? Yeah, um, I think s social media has helped a lot. And honestly, I don't even like the term like marketing because like marketing sounds like you're trying to convince somebody to buy a product or a service that, you know, you are providing. Right. Yeah. I, I like to use social media as a platform to communicate. You know, it's just a form of communication and we want to be able to at 416 Dentistry, tell our story, provide educational content and things that people can really learn from and grow with. And I want us to be authentic on social media, where if somebody sees something that we created when they meet us in person, they can expect that same sort of person, right? Yeah. And we kind of talked about how social media right now, people are, you know, dental offices are finding that they need an Instagram account. They need a Facebook page or whatnot, just because everyone else is doing it. Yeah. And they're paying somebody else to manage their social media. They're essentially being antisocial on social media. They're not even, <laughs> that's not even their goal. Right? That's not it's even so the word. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah going to a bar and having, you know, a chaperone with you doing all the talking, right? How weird yeah. is that? That's what that is. That's what people are doing on social media. Jay, and I'll like any wingman. other. I'll, I'll go to the bar <laughs> with you and I will talk for you. <laughs> You're totally but, right, though, I mean, man. It was... It's being anti social right? on social media. I knew... That's awesome. <laughs> but it's like you have to use social media as a form of communication and the way and the reason why you want to communicate is to build relationships and you can't build relationships if you're not open honest and authentic because they're not real relationships and i think that's how this thing is blowing up because people are seeing us being real on social media seeing us you know doing things differently and they want to meet us and they want to experience kind of what we're doing so my word of advice is just you know figure out your niche who you are and just share that with the world and put it out there and i know there's like-minded people that are going to come right back dude that is that is so awesome it, it you're basically living proof that an authentic self 
succeeds. And uh, I, I genuinely appreciate that because, you know, you don't have to be fake. You don't have to throw on this facade because kn- I've known you for years now, buddy. This is you. And I am so proud of you to, to get to where you well, are. Thank you. Now, thank um, you. I want people like I was in your office uh, a month <laughs> ago. Was it a month ago? We were taking out some wisdom. Yeah. And yeah. it was, man, it was so much. It was so cool to be in the Mecca of 416 Dentistry. <laughs> I want people to see, I want people to see behind you. Show them your office here. Oh man, yeah. So this is, I like to call it kind of like the lounge or the reception area of our office. Uh, you see these like, um, I guess these wooden slats up there. Yeah. Um, I love the like architectural element. And I wanted people to, when they walked in, to not feel like they're at a dental office. Because people are yeah. scared to come to the dentist. And if they're scared about coming to the dentist and the moment they come in, they realize they're in dental office, they already feel uh, insecure or they, you know, the, the hair on the back of their necks kind of raise and whatnot. So I wanted it to feel like they're coming to a local cafe or a local restaurant, uh, meeting, you know, a friend and, and, and catching up with a friend. So I wanted sort of that vibe here. And so I decided to not really put a ceiling up here and have these wooden beams here because I wanted people when they sat in our waiting room to feel like they had no ceiling above them where the sky's the limit and they can reach any potential that they want. And so later on, what we're planning to do is turn this space here into a um, not like a lecture hall, but having, you know, 10 to 15 people sit and listen to other people talk and share their stories. Like I said, with my friend that was the pharmacist turned baker or um, other people doing amazing things in the community. Uh, the, we have our, our sort of little uh, consult room, which I like to call the discovery room. So when we meet patients for the first time, we sit with them at a round table in order to converse with them and get to know who they are as people, as opposed to teeth and, and dollar signs, right? And so again, uh, keeping that sort of vibe where they're meeting somebody for the first time that wants to build an open, honest sort of relationship with them. Uh, we have a big TV right behind our receptionist here. Um, the TV is constantly playing the content that we create, content for the, the community. Uh, this right now is playing a loop video of both Karen and I uh, visiting the local Toys R Us where we had a local toy drive for the holidays where we were able to, with our big 416 Dentistry family, uh, collect over a hundred toys that we donated to the Salvation Army. So uh, that's playing right there. So yeah, man, it's uh, honestly, it's my home away from, I spend more time here than, than actually at home. And it's a place that inspires me. Like I worked with the local Toronto architect in order to design and create this space. And we found out that a lot of the elements that we used here from the porcelain to the glass to the metal were materials that we use in dentistry. So as an artist, that uses these materials and to surround myself with these uh, these raw elements and materials. I hope to be able to get inspiration from the space that you know I'm surrounded by. So it's it's neat, man. I, I love the space, and uh, sometimes I wish it was a little bit bigger, but uh, <laughs> but this is a great start, man. I dude, I'm in awe right now. I, I just love hearing you talk because all I hear is a vision that came to reality. Right? How, yeah, how, yeah. how did you create this vision? Like, how did you think of, man, I, I want people to feel like there is no ceiling. I want this to be the <laughs> discovery. Like, how did you create this and how did you make it into reality? Like, this is so important for, you know, even myself to hear because we all have ideas, but then you're like, eh, I don't have for that. But you yeah. did it, man. Yeah. I'm so proud yeah. of you, Jay. Like, this is phenomenal, yeah. man. How, like, how do you brainstorm? What 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 goes into into your ideas, and and how do you make it into reality? Yeah, you know what? Um, when I worked with the architect when I first met him, I was like, I want you to not think dental office. Like, pretend I'm not a dentist. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is you're going to get to know me and who I am as a person uh, and a human being first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a space that is a reflection of who I am as a person. And then we're going to reverse engineer the space where I can practice the art and craft of dentistry. Um, so yes, there are elements that a dental office has to have, like your operatories and whatnot. But this yeah. is why it ended up totally looking different because the intention wasn't to create a dental office. It was to create a space that is Jason. So the moment somebody walks in the door, they actually get to know a bit about who I am 
as a as a as a person before they meet me as a dentist you know and um, what i did in order to figure out how i wanted to create space and the workflow here is obviously i use experience from you know working at other offices and whatnot but honestly i think you have to just really ask yourself the simple question of how if how do you want to be like how would you want to be treated you know yeah. knowing what you know in dentistry just ask yourself if you know if how would you want to be treated if you were to go to a dental office and then i de deconstructed every little stage of you know the patient experience and figuring out ways how to fine tune it even if it's one percent better when you reconstruct everything and amalgamate it back together it's exponentially better and so that's what i kind of did and everything kind of worked out but yeah bro that's that beautiful <laughs> man i i think that that's awesome now, something that I struggle with when I'm listening to, to things like this, like we all have ideas, but then yeah. self-doubt creeps in. Like yeah. self-doubt creeps in. Am I good enough? Is yeah. this going to be accepted by other people? Did you ever get those thoughts, Matt? <laughs> tons, tons. Um, you know, um, I, we, I built this office uh, last year and that's my, I think, eighth or ninth year being a dentist, right? I had friends that ended up owning practices the first year out or third year out. And so mm -hmm. I feel there was always a part of me that I'm kind of late to the game. But uh, what I realized is that everybody has their own journey. Everyone has their own story and destiny. And mine was to take a little longer in order to create a space that, again, is a reflection of who I am. But yeah, tons of self-doubt, uh, tons of criticism. And like that's when I started, when I signed the lease, it was in 2020 when we were in COVID-19. Like yeah. there was tons of people that said, Jason, are you sure? Like the bank, the bank I was dealing with, they pulled out. They didn't want to finance the project because they said that they're not doing any startups right now. I felt like this dream would never happen. It would not be possible. Um, people said, well, it's not the right time. People said it's not the right place. People said, well, you should be opening out outside of the GTA. You know how competitive it is in the GTA? There's a dentist at every corner. Right. And it's true. There is a dentist at every corner. They also said that, Jason, like you invest your life into dentistry, going to CE like every other week, spending thousands of dollars on CE, investing all this time and money. Do you think Scarborough would appreciate this? Like, that's what this other people are saying. Right. But for me, it was like, why does Scarborough deserve anything less, first of all? And this is the community that raised me. And I wanted and I always talk about how just like LeBron James, you know, won a championship for Cleveland. I wanted to go back to Scarborough and win a championship for Scarborough and help my people. So tons of criticism. But honestly, I think if you can dream it, you can do it. And uh, like we kind of talked about before, like take those first steps. Right. And everything will sort of fall into place. Bro. I I'm, honestly, I'm speechless right now because I'm seeing that right now. Do you remember? I want to say it was pre COVID three years ago. It was a cold, cold night in Toronto, maybe three in the morning. We were eating, <laughs> uh, we were eating a shawarma at three in the morning in this, in, in this like dingy restaurant and like yeah. all night restaurant. And you're telling me about 416 Dentistry. You're like, Neki, I want to build the place that people will come to. That, you know, yeah. it's not the reason why they smile. It's it's how we can make people smile and, and why they smile. Not just about teeth, but we want to be the reason. And you've created, man, like full kudos to you. I think it is um, absolutely incredible. Um, going into 2022, like, man, you've, you've been so inspirational so far. But going into 2022, what do you want to share with your colleagues? What do you want us to, to you know, be as dentists? Um, you know, actually in 2020, I made a video with Ivo Clark called one, one world united. And it kind of talked about, um, how we had to close our doors for three months right. and we, we didn't even know how long it could have been indefinite. I, we didn't know how long we were not going to go to work for. Right. But I wanted to use that time in order to better myself. And I wanted to weather the storm because I knew there was a rainbow at the end of the storm. Right. And obviously we've been back to work, but we're still in this COVID pandemic and this mess here. But, you know, in 2020 uh, and 2021, I've been really, truly blessed. Like um, 
I, we, we built this, you know, amazing practice where we are able to share our passion for dentistry with, with the people at Toronto. Um, I'm supposed to start, I, I got into my master's, uh, at King's college in London, England in aesthetic dentistry. Right. Congratulations. I had the birth of my, awesome. thank you. I had the birth of my daughter, right. Chloe, like that's another major highlight of my life. So, uh, all these amazing things have happened. And the other thing also is meeting incredible people like 416 dentistry was, has been an incredible platform for me to be able to also meet and connect with amazing people. Like uh, we talked about before, you know, Mark Chen is an incredible denturist who's a wizard at digital dentistry. And I'm proud to be able to call him my teammate and friend. Um, Karen's an incredible hygienist that I met. Uh, who's super talented, that's changing the hygiene game. And this is just the start of our journey. And I can't wait to see what we're able to do with this, you know, in 2022 and in the future. And I would just really encourage people to, you know, take those first steps and put that positive energy out there. Life has a way of, you know, sending that positive vibes back. And you get those like-minded people that really support you and want to see you do better, see you elevate yourself to that next level. And uh, man, I, I, let's go back full circle to the very beginning when you started talking and you were kind of thanking me about the video, uh, I, I was teaching you some of these things, man. I'm so proud of you. Like you, <laughs> I, I no, but no, hear this out, man. First of all, you're an incredible storyteller and I'm so happy that you, you spent the time and invested the time to, to get into videography because I hear the stories that you're telling me at 3 a.m. in the morning eating halal guys and the shawarma, right? And I wanted people to hear those stories, man, because you've been a big inspiration in my life. And I see what you did with Third Molars Online. You've created so much content in such a short period of time. I don't even know how that's humanly possible because I know how much time and effort goes into that stuff, man. And you're not only helping dentists have the confidence to be able to help their patients, um, but, uh, it, it has these like echoing effects where, you know, the videos that they have watched is helping patients all over Canada. Like you've helped patients all over Canada because you've invested the time. So it's amazing to see what you've done with it, man. Oh, shit. Well, thanks, man. No, Jay, I, I want to leave, I want to leave this conversation off with these there's, I'd say a large majority of us dentists, we, we want to be able to share our story. Like you were saying before to, to show our authentic self. Yes. Social media is intimidating. Yes. It, it is so intimidating. And I, I personally, I find it tough to like, I see your stories all the time and I'm like, uh, I, I like you, you're literally sharing your, your day to day. What are you telling new grads about you know, the new face of dentistry out there. Is dentistry going to be all CE? Is it going to be, you know, more social media? Is, is it going to be trying to create a brand? Um, where do you see dentistry going, man? I, I really do feel like you have to differentiate yourself from others. Yeah. Um, you know, we know there is a new dynamic in dentistry where there are big, you know, corporations, um, that are, that are titans in our, in the dental industry. And if you want, and there's nothing wrong with working at, you know, for a corporation, if that's something that you want, but if your dream was always to open up your own office, you need to be able to create an identity for yourself that will resonate with the, you know, your target market, um, and you need to you need to be able to communicate with them. And right now, like, if, let me ask you, would you ever put an ad in the yellow pages right now? <laughs> no. Like, no, right? Well, yeah, probably not, right? Because that's just an, an old form of communication, yeah. and that's the same way where you know mailers could it could be an older form of communication at some point and social media is daunting. It is because oh, quite often you're putting yourself out there in front of a camera. Um, but it is the new way to communicate. And the other very interesting thing, Nikki is, you know, you let's say to create one of your third molar online videos, I know it takes a lot of time, but like for a three minute video, how long does it usually take? Probably two hours. 
two hours. Yeah, it's a lot. People don't realize how much time that goes into, especially if you want that yeah. high production quality and level. Yeah. But the thing is, after spending those two hours, you are literally able to make a positive impact to people literally all over the world. Totally. Like people can tune in right now to Third Molars Online, whether I'm on the East Coast or West Coast of Canada. They can t tune in online if they're in Asia, if they're in yeah. South America, if they really wanted to, right? Yeah. So social media is able to amplify your voice to another level that you can't, you know, unfortunately in other avenues. And, you know, as a dentist, we only have two hands and we can only see so many patients in one day. And if you're able to be able to share some of that information that you usually share with patients one-on-one, -on -one, but put it on social media, now you can actually share that with the entire world. And yeah. so think of it that way, you know, do what you do with your patients, but when you're putting it on social media, you're actually sharing your passion for dentistry with the entire world. Man, I can't think of a better ambassador for dentistry than you. <laughs> Honestly, man, your, your authentic authenticity spills off the screen, man. I, I am honored and I didn't think that this would, you know, turn into this kind of conversation. And it, it has been just humbling to hear your story come to reality. And, uh, Jay, it's an absolute honor for, for, you know, allowing me to interview you and to show oh, us your you, new man. home behind you. Uh, you have a brand like, you know, growing family now. I'm excited to see what 416 Dentistry um, does next because I know it's going to be amazing, man. Thank you. It's uh, been an honor being on this here, Nikki. Um, I appreciate you taking your time to, and, and all the time, all the advice you've given to me. Um, it's It's been truly amazing having you as a mentor and, and a friend. So uh, mm -hmm. I hope we get to see each other again sometime soon. Get Maybe catch a Raptors game, right? That's right. <laughs> That'd be That's awesome. Right. Yeah. But until yeah. then, I'm going to rep my 416 Dentistry with go. pride, buddy. <laughs> if people want Thank to pick so up much. any uh, 416 Dentistry swag, where do they get that at? Yeah, so uh, definitely follow us on Shop IVIVI on, uh, on Instagram. Uh, you can also go on our website, uh, IVIVIToronto.com. Uh, the great thing about our, our merchandise, it's all made locally in Toronto by local uh, Toronto-owned businesses. We're trying to support families that are struggling right now with their businesses. Uh, everything from the, the milling, the dyeing, the cut and sew, all done in Toronto, in Scarborough. Uh, the embroideries are all done here too. And we also give a portion of proceeds to local Toronto charities. And right now we're working with sick kids. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, so, man, you're always thinking i, I love it, it man i'm gonna go pick up myself a couple other hoodies i love it man. <laughs> yeah, thanks, um man. i'm gonna i'm gonna go post uh the website in the comments below cool uh, appreciate it Thank yeah you. and uh if, if people want to reach you on instagram what are your handles yeah it's uh your tooth doctor so you are the number two thdr uh that's on instagram as well as 416 dentistry on instagram as well Dude, give uh, give Jason a follow. He just uh, released a wicked video on uh, an unboxing of the Medit scanner, which I'm going to be watching right after this. And uh, Jason, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Please stay in touch. Please post regularly sure. and uh, let us know what you're doing. But until then, you can catch Jay on his uh, Instagram stories showing his authentic self. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you, Nikki. Okay, Peace. we'll see you guys later. See you guys next week.